All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's 12.02. Uh, we will get this train rolling along here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Bay Area Transit Voices Forum number one, focused on health and safety. Uh, thank you very much for all of you to joining us this afternoon. My name is David Sorrell. I'm the board member uh, at Seamless Bay Area, and I'll be your co-host for today's forum which is co-hosted also with uh, the San Francisco Transit Writers Union, uh, the Silicon Valley Climate Youth, the United Seniors of Oakland and Alameda County, Youth Leadership Institute, and Friends of Caltrain. As many of you all know that this is a precarious moment for the Bay Area Transit and for the future of our region. Cutbacks in transit service as a result of the COVID-19 crisis are creating a new range of new challenges and hurdles for riders traveling around the Bay Area. We know that the safety of transit has been a top concern for riders. As a group of organizations that represent and advocate for tra transit riders, we feel that it is critically important to collect input from local transit riders like yourselves about your experiences and thoughts about using transit right now. With your input, we look forward to working with elected officials and transit leaders to make sure that the Bay Area's transit recovery plans take into account the perspectives and the needs of transit riders. Our region has set up a blue ribbon transit recovery task force which you will hear about in a moment which is all about developing a plan for adopting our transit system to the current COVID-19 crisis. As a reminder we're planning to record and summarize experiences of what we hear from writers at this forum so we plan on recording this but we plan on using this as a way to inform our transit agencies of, and the task force themselves about our work and what we're doing today. Uh, let's move on to our, we would like to use this time to invite our members of our partner organizations that are co-hosting this forum today uh, to introduce themselves and say a few words about their groups. And we'll begin with uh, the SF Transit Writers Union. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Kat Carter the interim executive director with San Francisco Transit Riders. We are an independent nonprofit member supported uh, group, nonprofit group advocating for efficient, affordable and always growing transit in San Francisco. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for, for being here. Hi there, I, I guess I'm supposed to speak now. My name is Thea Selby and I am a proud board member of the San Francisco Transit Riders. And we are, um, the only thing I'll add to what Kat said is uh, we're very happy uh, to hear from transit riders in every form and are doing uh, work on our, our uh, in San Francisco, which you'll be hearing about shortly. Um, we are in San Francisco, really the hub of um, transportation, having the most transit riders and we are the largest transit rider organization in the Bay Area. So we're very proud of that and very, very happy to be here today. Thank you for organizing. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Lalo, are you on the call? Hi, yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Lalo. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name is Lalo Gonzalez. I'm with the Youth Leadership Institute. Um, based out in San Mateo County. We're a nonprofit um, that partners with young people across San Mateo County uh, to develop the leadership skills and also be um, active leaders in their communities um, and increasing their civic engagement. Um, we do this um, by working on topics around substance use prevention as well as transportation access um, and also um, talking about uh, mental health. Um, and yeah, thank you all for being here today and thank you all for um, organizing this. Thank you. Uh, Monica Mellon. Hi, I'm Monica and I'm from Silicon Valley Youth Climate Action and we've been very focused on improving funding for transit operations at BTA and improving transit speed. Thank you very much for being here. 
Um, and then we also have uh, Chanita Chu with the USA OC. Um, she may be on the call. Uh, I apologize if I missed you. Um, okay, so let's talk about our agenda for this afternoon. Uh, we're going to begin today's forum with a roughly 10 minute presentation by Ian Griffiths of the Seamless Bay Area. He'll, he's going to provide a overview about the current state of transit right now, uh, including operations and plans for Bay Area transit recovery, and details about how we'll be able to use this information uh, that we'll hear from you today. At roughly 12.20, after Ian's presentation, we will be splitting into smaller breakout groups of about 10 people each uh, so that we can talk about in detail about their experiences using transit, uh, sharing our thoughts on safety and distancing protocols needed on transit now, as well as in the future. Each one of these breakout groups will have a volunteer facilitator from one of the partners um, that will ask questions, gather information, and then guide the discussion and report back. After about 25 minutes in the breakout groups, we'll reconvene as one single group again for the last 15 minutes of the forum. Every breakout group will have an opportunity to share insights from their discussion. You're welcome to participate using video, especially for the breakout sessions, but if you don't want to, or if you don't have access to video, that's perfectly fine. However, I am going to mute everyone during the first part of the session, and then I'll invite you to mute yourself for the un, for unmute yourselves for the breakout groups uh, for the session later. Again, we're planning to use to record the breakout session so that in the event that you wish not to be recorded, just turn off your video. We invite everyone on the call to submit questions uh, or comments through the Zoom chat function at any time during today's forum. With that in mind, I'd like to turn it over to Ian Griffiths. Thank you, Dave. Um, so I will be giving a very <clears throat> brief overview. I uh, apologize. I should have. Here's our agenda for today um, that you just uh, that Dave just took you through, and I will be giving a very broad overview of uh, the state of transit right now in the Bay Area and what's been going on with regard to safety. Um, and then we really want to spend the majority of the time today discussing what your actual experiences have been and where you have concerns and questions. So there's, since the shelter in place order went into effect on March 17th uh, across most of the Bay Area, the total amount of travel has been reduced um, and you know, non-essential travel has been discouraged by our county health departments as well as by the state, um, reducing the number of people riding transit uh, this is an image of a campaign from VTA. Uh, um, the most of the and that really reduces the number of people that can be on a, a bus or a train at any time. It means we can. Uh, there, approximately between nine and 15 riders can be on a bus at any time. Uh, approximately 30 riders could be on a BART train or 40 to 50 riders on a Caltrain train and maintain that social distancing. Uh, what this means is, uh, and as you'll have noticed this if you've been riding transit, that there's a lot fewer transit riders uh, in this, using transit right now, about 70 to 80% fewer than before COVID. Um, the, there's been even greater reductions on BART and Caltrain in particular, all the 90%, about a 90% reduction on those specific services, whereas the bus services have, uh, you know, still seen major reductions, but not as much. And a lot of service cuts have uh, been made, and I'm sure many of you are aware of, uh, in response um, to the decline in riders, uh, and also to you know, that there's a big budget crisis that's been created by this decline in transit use because many of the transit agencies in our region uh, rely off of fares and well, as well as other sources in order to fund their service. Um, so uh, some costs have been made to save on uh, funding. Um, 
So, you know, another way of thinking about that, though, is that there's 20 to 30 percent of the riders that still are using transit every day. Um, and, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, 31 percent approximately of transit users are uh, deemed as essential workers. So many of those people left riding transit are essential workers getting to, uh, in, you know, important jobs that are keeping us all going. Um, and many of you may, there, are, I, there may be many essential workers on this call that have been using transit and we would love to have, hear your experiences. Um, nationwide, there's been some surveys that have been done uh, that indicate that those people that are using transit now are more likely than before COVID-19 uh, and are disproportionately uh, people who are considered to be transit dependent. They don't have access to a car. This includes many uh, seniors, people with disabilities, and youth in particular. Uh, many people who are low income, people left using transit are more likely uh, or disproportionately women and people of color. Um, so to respond to this not only safety crisis but also budget crisis uh, that is uh, threatening the future of our transit system, our transit agencies are, are working together like they never have before. Um, back in April, uh, something called the Blue Ribbon Transit Recovery Task Force was created by a number of our uh, elected leaders that is focused on coordinating the Bay Area's transit recovery strategy um, uh, and sharing experiences and trying to rebuild together and stronger than before. It includes uh, the major transit agencies in our region, a number of elected leaders, a number of advocacy groups, including Seamless Bay Area and, and others on this call today, and then state and regional agencies. Um, and over the next 12 months, they're focusing on, uh, as I mentioned, coordinating the recovery strategies, but that includes a health and safety plan uh, of how we can have common safety practices across our transit system to increase the confidence of riders in coming back to the system. And then looking a little further ahead, um, identifying some of the other reforms that we can make that can help put transit on a stronger foot moving forward for the next coming year so we can rebuild stronger and more connected than before. And it's this task force that is in particular why this rider forum is so important right now. Because um, many of the people on this task force are not necessarily riding transit a lot. They don't necessarily know what it's like, even if they work for an agency or they're an elected leaders. It's really important. We think that they hear what, what riders are really experiencing. Um, and so that's why we're recording this session. And we want to really communicate what we hear today uh, to uh, members of that task force and make it available and hopefully have more of these forums uh, in the future on other topics. Um, and we'll also hope to let you know about when this task force might be having their own uh, official uh, forums um, on, on these various topics. So moving, um, finally, before we go into the breakout groups, we want to talk a little bit about safety and what's going on right now. Um, something that may be on many of your minds uh, is, you know, the simple question, is transit safe? Um, and we want to be clear. Um, first of all, that none of, the, none of the organizers of this call are, you know, health and safety experts. Um, and many things are still in flux. You know, this, we're learning more about this coronavirus every day and how it's spread and transmitted. Um, you know, we can't really say that anything is 100% safe. Um, uh, and we also know that the spread of this virus is, you know, greatly related to how many infections there are overall in our state, in our region, and in our country. Um, and unfortunately, right now, the, this, the, there's a graph here showing the number of daily new cases in the Bay Area. This is for, as of yesterday. Um, we are right now in this moment at a, the highest level number of new cases uh, that we've ever been at. So we're certainly not at this period of having stabilized uh, this virus. And for that reason, you know, now more so than any ever before, it's really important uh, that we use caution and that we avoid any non-essential trips and that people stay home when they can. That said, we know that when we look at other places in the world where they have flattened the curve and where the number of new cases has become more stable, 
we can see that transit can be safe um, and, and that where the right precautions are taken, that transit can be safe uh, in that environment of where infections overall have been stabilized. And that relates to a whole bunch of factors that are outside of you know, the transit system itself. Um, and there's some links here about some articles and studies on this, but other places where they've brought the number of cases under control uh, that have reopened their transit system, that have seen a lot more, a lot of people come back to transit and using transit, and that have been uh, using many of the strategies I'm about to discuss, uh, they have not seen major new surges in cases associated. Uh, or, uh, they haven't seen new surges in cases, and and they, and and those where there have been surges, they haven't specifically connected those to the transit system. Um, so you may have seen that you know, Bay Area transit agencies certainly are responding and doing a number of things, um, such as increasing the frequency of cleaning um, vehicles, uh, wiping down trains, changing their practices, as well as awareness campaigns, such as encouraging people to maintain social distance, um, you know, wear masks, uh, wash hands, or in some cases, provide hand sanitizer. Um, the, this is a list of the 10 strategies that were highlighted in the Bay Area Healthy Transit Plan, which is the, the joint effort of the, the transit agencies involved in the, the Bay Area Transit Task Force that I was mentioning earlier, that are based on research of practices around the world that have been found to make transit uh, safer. Um, so these are, these are strategies that are, some of, some of which are out in the world already, they're in various levels of implementation, but you know, those 10 strategies that are believed to make transit safer are you know, universal mask wearing, uh, encouraging as many people as possible to wear masks, you know, avoiding uh, any unnecessary talking, which can uh, 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 increase the spread of the virus, um, uh, frequent cleaning of vehicles, as I mentioned, maintaining social distancing or more accurately for transit, it's really a, a minimizing the amount of crowding that we have, um, encouraging hand washing and providing hand sanitizer in, in, in where, where possible. Um, improved ventilation is believed to also assist with reducing the spread uh, on, on transit vehicles within and within transit stations. A number of strategies aimed at protecting employees are part of the safety strategy. That includes uh, wellness assessments where transit drivers and operators are you know, asked to be screened, they're screened for symptoms uh, to make sure that if they are, they are displaying systems, symptoms of COVID-19 that they don't come to work. Um, also providing protective equipment to protect, uh, you know, such as shields um, and face masks for drivers that protects both the drivers as well as the riders. Uh, contact tracing for employees so that if an employee does uh, test positive, we, they're able to trace where, who else that person has become in contact with. And then minimizing the amount of touching that is required, uh, surface touching that is required for using transit and particularly speeding up the transition towards uh, using touchless payments or you know, not having to go to a machine to buy a ticket uh, for using transit. So those are, those are the strategies that are being developed, some of, some of which have already been implemented uh, across some agencies, um, but those are all kind of part, pieces of the solution here. But really, we want to hear from you. This is, we, we're here today primarily to hear what your experiences have been. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dave to introduce the breakout groups, um, and then he'll be breaking everyone into uh, a number of groups. Thank you, Ian. Uh, so right now, we're going to be doing that right now with the breakout groups. Uh, we'll be splitting into smaller listening sessions so that all writers will have a better opportunity to share their thoughts and experiences with all the groups and all of our partners. Uh, you should see a notification on your screen in just a little bit um in which that uh you know indicating that you will be moved to a breakout room uh momentarily so a few comments about the breakout rooms uh number one uh we ask that you keep yourself muted uh 
unless you're speaking, obviously, to improve the sound quality for everyone. Uh, number two, we'll be recording this forum, as we mentioned previously. We also plan to post it online and share it with the task force members. We welcome you to introduce yourself before you speak, but then again, if you prefer not to, or if you prefer not to disclose your name as stated before, you can always turn off your camera if you don't want to be recorded. Lastly, I want to remind everyone that one of our main goals is to hear from people that who have been writing transit during COVID-19's crisis. If you have not been writing transit, we still want to hear from you, but please try to let people that have been using transit over the last four months to have the opportunity to speak first um, so that we ensure that we capture those experiences. Please be patient in the next minute or two so that we make sure that there is a facilitator present in each and every one of the breakout rooms. Thank you.
thing here. Whoop.
Hi, Donna. We're gonna. I'm gonna assign you with a um, uh, a breakout room momentarily. So just hold on one second. Walter, thank you for joining us. I'm going to put you in a uh, breakout room. Uh, this is just for brainstorming for another uh, 10 minutes or so so that you can be able to express kind of your concerns or what you've been noticing if you've been writing transit. Thank you for joining the call. Uh, stand by.
Hi, Rhea. Uh, I'm going to assign you, uh, put you in a uh, breakout room. Uh, thanks for joining our call. Um, so you'll be able to give some feedback to some of the transit agencies and questions that you may have. And uh, above all else, thank you for joining the call. So uh, stand by.
Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for sharing your ideas and, and taking the time to kind of discuss uh, what's been going on um, in transit. Uh, so I think that for the, you know, for what it's worth that I, myself, and uh, our entire board um, and everyone that's participating in, in our partners, uh, that we could not be more grateful for your willingness to share your writer experiences and perspectives during such a turbulent time. If you have additional thoughts, ideas, or concerns, uh, we invite you to email us and we'll be in touch. Um, that being said, I want to now invite representatives and facilitators from each breakout session to provide a quick one minute update on the major themes and ideas that came up within your conversations. We know that there's a lot to discuss, so we'll keep these uh, to about a minute uh, so that we can hear from every breakout group. Uh, we'll start with, uh, let's see, I believe it was breakout room number six. Uh, Janita, would you like to not only introduce yourself, um, we didn't get a chance to do that earlier, but also uh, talk about your group. Um, I did, uh, actually, um, Eugene was the captain. I did take quite a, quite a few notes. Um, I, um, but Eugene was the captain. Eugene, you want to talk for me? We can do this together. The plane can't fly itself. Yes. Okay. We only got a minute, so you better get started. All right. Basically. Because I'm still trying to type a message. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anyway. Feel free. If I need to chime in, I will. All right. Step in. All right. Let's do this. Anyway, we discussed, most of us take a combination of Caltrain and BART to our jobs, many of whom from a long ways out. Our biggest concern, though, is just connections between, especially between Caltrain and BART, and particularly in places like Millbay, where one misconnection can cause you to wait anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour or more. Not fun. For the most part, the buses like AC Transit, Sam Trans, and VTA are pretty safe, great buses, clean operators. It's mostly because of the, there's few, we've had one person come in from Half Moon Bay who just, that 17 bus that she takes in 294, that's the only transit she has. And she lives in an area of Half Moon Bay. They only get bus service once an hour. So really there should be a need to help increase that, especially for, We've had a couple of people, they can work from home, do the shelter in place. They love, they want to ride transit. If only that transit like VTA ran a little bit later and didn't, it wasn't really as crowded. Riding transit is cool as long as you can actually use it. And that's something that has to be corrected, particularly with VTA's case. So overall, we think transit is good. We're waiting to the steps. We all need to help make transit better. Want to change Janita with anything or? No, I, I think she went on mute. So I, I think that that's good enough. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Janita and Eugene, for both, uh, you know, tag teaming with the group. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll go to breakout room number five with Beaudry. Uh, Sarah was actually leading, so I'll defer to her. Who was? Sarah Greenwald. All right. Thank you very much, Sarah. Yes, thank you. Um, I was assigned by Stephanie. I'm not sure how that, that happened. Um, Baudry was the only person who's riding transit now, and one of his comments was that, uh, yeah, he's okay with it. He has to be okay with it because he's going on the bus. Um, some, the other people um, mentioned that they're using a car when they have to, trying to limit that. Um, and some people perceived uh, transit as relatively safe, uh, not as unsafe or no more unsafe than say dining in a group uh, which people are apparently doing uh, because there's relatively less compliance than pretty much everybody would like. And uh, the VTA in particular seems to be uh, going against its legal uh, responsibilities and just not bothering with them, doing some things and others, that kind of thing. Um, 
So the uh, article in the Atlantic that says transit is not as unsafe as people think, there was some concern about that. Uh, for one thing, it seems easier to trace a cluster of people who've met in a bar, for example, than people who've just happened to be on the bus, even in China where everybody's photographed and identified very readily. Uh, that um, the, in the other parts of the world, the background about um, knowing about uh, uh, the disease, the experience with the disease, and the tendency to comply with government orders is very different. Uh, the health department order is very different. Belief of science, you know. Um, in terms of, uh, well, other questions, we had a lot of ideas. Uh, Bart says it does daily fogging. If this is so important, all the other agencies should do it. It, it has to do with whether aerosol transmission is, a, is a, the biggest uh, problem or, or not. Um, homeless people still have to go on transit. None of that's been uh, resolved. Uh, Jerry Tumlin has advised people not to use Muni. That's one reason people are not using Muni. Okay. And uh, Helen Walsh, uh, who I'm very sorry, I neglected to call upon for most of the time, but she has a disability and has noted that the schedule changes are making things even worse. And she doesn't even bother trying to use transit because they made it impossible. Awesome. Good to know. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, let's talk with uh, Lalo and his group. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass it over to Dustin. He's going to share out um, how group went. Okay, Dustin? Yes, okay, now I'm going to mute it. Yes, so in our group, um, we use a variety of transit agencies all over the Bay Area, but most of us have stopped using it uh, pretty much during the beginning of the shutdown in March. Um, and those who still take it, they only use it for very essential things or they want to see what's going on uh, with transits. Um, in terms of safety, there are some comments about, you know, people would feel more comfortable if people knew that people wearing masks regularly and wearing them properly and that people were observing uh, social distancing correctly. And I guess for question three, there's an interesting comment about people wanting to see consistency across agencies for safety protocols. So knowing that one agency safety protocol, you know, wouldn't differ drastically if they had to change into another service and making sure that there's a consistent message across all the agencies in the Bay Area. And I think that pretty much sums up our group. Most good. Thank you very much, Dustin. Uh, let's see here, uh, Monica and Sandhya. Uh, let's see. Hi, uh, so uh, Tom will be talking about what we discussed in our group. Who will? Uh, Tom Barton. Okay, Tom Barton. Got it. Okay, Tom. Okay, uh, thank you. I live in San Francisco. I've been riding the Muni since 1967. It's my only form of transportation. Some of the things we talked about was we had one person that was using transit to get to San Mateo where they worked it's becoming more difficult to rely on public transit, at least going down into the peninsula so they've had to borrow or use somebody's car. Uh, we also discussed about the buses in San Francisco, sometimes they're crowded. How do you maintain a social distance? So you wanna wait for the next bus, which may be 20 minutes or more longer to ride on. And then when you do get on the bus, even though it's required in San Francisco that you wear a mask, not everybody does. I was on a bus recently and there was a bunch of teenage kids and half of them didn't have a mask on. And so these are challenges you have to deal with. We also discussed about, they removed 40 of the bus lines, muni bus lines in the city. Who's gonna make that decision of what bus lines they keep or not? And how is a group for the people that are interested in the transportation in muni meet with whoever in Muni is gonna make that decision so we can have uh, an input. We also mentioned about the essential trip card which you can have in San Francisco, which you can use on a taxi for essential trips to go to and from the store or to and from 
uh, doctor's appointment. And then it was also mentioned about having to deal with seniors in a senior housing or senior place to where how do they get around and how do they rely on public transit. So I guess I spoke more than anybody, but I, I, I can't go anywhere without public transit. So I have no way to commute. So hopefully within this group, there'll be a way to facilitate a meeting with the muni officials so we can ask those questions. How did you decide to, to eliminate XYZ line and keep A line? So I hope that can happen with the people that are facilitating this session. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Ian, your group. And of those that, uh, that are interested, uh, we will hang on just a little bit longer. Uh, it's about 105, so you feel free to stick around if you'd like. Uh, we definitely want to hear from everyone uh, in their respective groups. Great, and as I say, we'll, if you are, do have to drop off, we'll, hope, we'll try to uh, you know, compile and share all of these feedback uh, so that everyone can look at it later. So our group, uh, we have a very broad group. We covered every part of the Bay Area um, uh, from Half Moon Bay to Concord to the South Bay. It was really amazing. I think, I think it was just randomly distributed, but um, it's several people, uh, you know, most people had stopped using transit um, for most of their trips. They, they mostly had, you know, not just any reason to travel because their school or their workplace had shut down. Um, but we did have several people who were using transit still for essential trips. Um, uh, one person in our group was uh, had used county connection several times and found it generally to be safe, uh, or he felt safe. Um, and uh, you know, didn't you know, there was never more than five or six people on it at any time. Similarly, someone else uh, in San Trans had had a, a family member who had you know was using it to go to work every day. Who is an essential worker who also said that they felt comfortable that the drivers were actually carrying hand sanitizer and offered it to them and that they that they saw people complying with uh, the masks. Uh, we did hear that um, uh, you know people's concerns, uh, especially those that weren't using transit, was really you know. Uh, every, the, the weather, you know, everyone was going to be wearing masks, you know, people could control what they were doing, but what they were nervous about was what, you know, the things that weren't within their control and they wanted to see that, you know, everyone, you know, would be wearing masks that would make them feel more comfortable about coming back. Also, uh, interesting air airflow uh, was talked about by several people in the group and really the everyone seems to be reading up the same articles that, uh, you know, the airborne transmission is, is a big risk and to the extent that we can improve ventilation on these vehicles and open windows, which maybe some of our buses haven't even been designed to have their windows open, but that was something that several people said would make them feel more comfortable about coming back to transit. Um, that's, I'll stop there. Thanks Ian. Uh, Ron? Sure. Uh, our group was primarily focused on uh, uh, the uh, San Francisco to the, and the peninsula. Um, uh, one individual uh, doesn't, has not ridden for health concerns. Uh, he, his doctor said that, you know, he, if he catches COVID, he will die. So he's very, he much concerned on that. But the other participants haven't used transit all that much. They've used it a few times, but primarily because their work, they're working from home and have had fewer needs to use transit. One person, uh, for example, took five trips on Sam Trans primarily for grocery shopping. Another person uh, went to their office twice, once by auto because they had to bring a whole bunch of stuff home the other time by Caltrain. Um, the uh, so uh, but uh, the 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 um those that have used transit have generally felt safe on it because ridership has been low and people for the most part have been uh, uh wearing uh, uh face masks uh or you know face coverings uh although um uh, did feel uh, uh one person did feel apprehensive riding bart because there was a number of people who were, were not wearing face coverings and there's this concern about the ability of transit agencies being able to enforce that. But uh, as far as, you know, how individuals feel, um, uh, the, you know, the, 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 
I think the most important thing that uh, was brought up is the need that everyone is, is wearing face coverings uh, while riding transit for them to, to feel safe and also, uh, you know, for vehicles not to be uh, crowded. Uh, probably one interesting thing, one, one of the individuals on our group uh, actually spent two weeks in Taipei and during that time had ridden uh, uh, the uh, metro 80 times and the bus five times. And I asked him how, you know, and he felt perfectly comfortable. And, and you know, basically, he, of course, he you know, said that there people comply with wearing face masks. And then for the most, a lot of people had worn it normally just because of poor air quality. Um, so that's become a lot more commonplace and was less of a problem. The country had a much better testing and tracking program, uh, but also the stations were spotless. Uh, there were attendants, uh, like for every two moving sidewalks or escalators, they're just there cleaning, constantly cleaning them. The cars were constantly cleaning them. So that there was, um, you know, taking all those efforts, uh, he felt perfectly comfortable riding transit and it appeared that uh, quite a few people felt very comfortable riding transit um, uh, during uh, during this period of time. But I think uh, the need for face coverings and the need to enforce that um, is probably was, is probably one of the biggest issues that, that that came out in our conversation as far as uh, you know feeling safe and comfortable using transit. Most good. Thank you very much, Ron. Cat uh, Carter. Hi. Uh, yeah, this is great to hear. Um, in our group, we were um, pretty, pretty much everybody's working from home. Not many people are riding. Some people have taken a couple trips here and there. Um, early on before mask requirements and maybe even before official shelter in place, um, when person was on the, taking a ferry and obviously being out in the breezes, um, felt very safe. Um, and another mentioned, we were primarily Let's see, San Francisco, East Bay, and Marin. Um, and a gentleman from Richmond saying we're excited for the Richmond Ferry Terminal, but obviously that brings up a, an equity issue if, if being on the ferry deck is a very safe way to travel. Um, it's also a very expensive way to travel and um, talking about uh, better fare equity there. Um, so what else did we talk about? So I didn't go as much through the formal, <laughs> the formal uh, questions as I should have. But um, uh, another person uh, did uh, take a, a ride on BART, and um, overall it was okay. But um, there was a person with, without a mask on the car. There's enough room to be further away from him, um, and I guess other people sometimes move cars. And apparently, there's this is you know sort of hearsay, whatever, non-scientific. But some people are finding BART to seem very clean compared to beforehand and other people are not experiencing that as as clearly um so uh what else did we talk about um uh early on um being on ac transit bus um and it being primarily unhoused folks uh before the mask requirement so it was not it was, it was a visible change early on between normal ridership and more um apparently unhoused people using using transit as shelter, I guess. Um, but also talking about the difference in ventilation um, that buses felt more comfortable because there are their doors open frequently. There is some ventilation versus uh, concerns about being undercrowned. Um, and then we just talked about generally about the importance of keeping everything clean, having regular cleanings, having um, PPE for all operators. Uh, when will agencies in the Bay Area be able to give out masks to riders? Um, who's planning on that? Who can pay for it? Um, and that mask compliance would be one uh, key way to help uh, people feel safe. So figuring out how we need to enforce compliance. Um, and I think that's about, and how important it is, I guess, also uh, one last note, communications from agencies to riders, how the outreach is happening, um, and helping riders understand how to, how to, you know, just because you got on the bus and sat down doesn't mean you get to take off your mask now. And how do you encourage riders to, to keep compliant um, so that everybody stays safe? I think awesome. that was about Thank it. Thank you, Kat. And last mm -hmm. but certainly not least, Thea. Thank you so much. Um, 
let's see, our group, we had uh, at, eventually we nine people um, and it, uh, they were from all over the Bay, which was very exciting. Uh, Larkspur, Fremont, um, Mountain View, San Francisco, uh, Marin County. Um, in general, uh, six out of eight um, of them uh, did not uh, ride, are not riding during COVID, have not ridden during COVID. Um, six out of nine, I guess, because we did get a person. Uh, seven out of nine, sorry. Um, there were two people who had done a little bit of riding, myself and uh, Steve Kinsey. And um, uh, Steve mentioned that he felt comfortable. He did have a mask and there was uh, social distancing when he rode. Um, and I, I, my experience on Muni has been that everybody is wearing masks. I didn't have the teenager experience, which must have been kind of frightening. And that the operator, I feel safe because the operator, who I'm also concerned about, is far away because of backdoor boarding um, from riders. So that's also helpful. And then in terms of sort of how to, how, how safe people feel, people, you know, I, I, I really like the comment from Greeny who said, it's like going to the grocery store. You, you know, you need to take your precautions. In her case, she's been masking gloves on. Um, she felt comfortable on Caltrain, which was her preferred uh, public transit because she said it's kind of like being outdoors, that there is a really good ventilation there. Um, another uh, person, Jean, was very, uh, obviously uh, concerned because uh, she had a 98 year old and a disabled 60 year old in her household. So she has, uh, you know, really it's gonna maybe be a while before she would feel comfortable just making sure she's not transmitting anything back by taking a uh, public transit. Um, somebody else mentioned that they uh, used to take part in bike share, but it is so much faster by car uh, the car is about 20 minutes faster because the congestion is lower that they're now taking their car. Uh, another person mentioned that um, it's not appropriate to ride transit for non-essential travelers, so he's not riding, um, but that his big concern is making sure that there's space per passenger um, on there. Um, Somebody from down south said that there was a recent, uh, or I don't know how recent, but there was a plan to lower coverage and have higher frequency on key lines. And that unfortunately that is made riding transit, her comment was theoretical uh, because uh, most people are so, too far away from a bus to actually use it. So, uh, but in terms of what is important, she thought spacing was very important as well. And then finally, um, there was, a, there was a, a, a positive comment for BART about schedules and um, the fact that BART is putting out schedules and how crowded things are, you know, how they're doing that scheduling thing. Um, and that'd be great to be able to do that with buses uh, to be able to see that as well. So those are some of the comments. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Thea. Thank you so much. And I, again, thank you for all of you guys uh, for, you know, giving your input, the patience of, uh, you know, just trying to see how things are moving, things are developing. And again, thank you very much for all of you for sharing these ideas. Uh, we're thankful, we're grateful for your willingness to share your experiences and perspectives. Um, if you have additional thoughts, ideas, or concerns, we invite you to email us uh, or in very much so we will keep in touch with you. Um, we are looking to have another writer forum in the near future, focusing on the impact of service cuts, service changes. Um, and we'll be sure to let everyone know, especially in this group, um, know when the next event will be scheduled. So again, thank you to all of our partners for co-hosting on this call. Uh, and we look forward to staying in touch with you in the weeks and months ahead. So thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon.